Good afternoon, everybody. I'm going to set my timer so I don't run too long. Um, I also want to um, express my affection for the people of France and um, my concern, like the rest of the world, with what took place here a few weeks ago. Um, actually, after the Second World War, my parents were refugees who came to France. Um, France welcomed my parents and helped save their lives, so um, this is a special day for me. Um, I want to uh, introduce our panelists, um, Dr. Nicoletta. She's known as Dr. Nicoletta because um, her last name is so um, challenging for a New Yorker to pronounce. Uh, Piccolo, Va, Piccolo Vaza, close, close, um, from Dow, and uh, my friend Neil Besson, who uh, is the uh, works for the French Ministry of Sport, and he is the uh, director of sustainable development uh, at the uh, French Ministry of Sport, um, more or less. And uh, he's been a, a great friend uh, to help us advance our mission. Um, I uh, have some slides, so we could just uh, put them up. Um, actually, I am going to um, take a different angle on this discussion about sports and the environment. Um, for me, uh, for the colleagues at the Green Sports Alliance, um, it is not so much about uh, enhancing efficiency at sports venues. It's not about uh, water reduction per se or energy efficiency per se. It's about using the platform of sports, an extraordinarily culturally visible platform to help heal the planet, to help change the world. Um, probably uh, the single most important thing we could do to advance uh, environmental stewardship is to uh, change cultural attitudes and expectations about how we relate to the earth. As we all know, we're facing urgent ecological issues, uh, issues that are much too important to be stymied by partisan political squabbling. And the question is, how do you pull people together uh, to address those issues? How do you pull people together to pay attention to those issues? You know, in the United States, only 16% of Americans follow science, but 71% follow sports. So um, really what sports offers those of us who are concerned about helping to address climate change, ocean acidification, deforestation, the proliferation of toxics, is a, uh, a very powerful platform, uh, a very powerful economic sector uh, that actually has uh, the attention of literally billions of people uh, and trillions of dollars of economic activity. Um, what I want to do is uh, go through a few slides, if we could get our slides up. I want to tell you about the, uh, the origins of the Green Sports Alliance. Ten years ago, um, not even ten years ago, there was no sports greening movement. Uh, actually, um, as many of you know, um, Robert Redford has been uh, very visible uh, at the COP speaking here on social media. He's been visible and, um, and around. And actually, um, at, when I was a senior scientist at the Natural Resources Defense Council, and the founder of Natural Resources Defense Council, John Adams, is right there, my mentor, my brother, um, there was a meeting uh, of the Board of Trustees of NRDC. Uh, and um, this was about 10 years ago. And uh, Bob Redford said, uh, you know, if you want to reach Americans, if you want to, you know, Know, connect with the average person, uh, you need to connect with sports. Uh, recognizing that uh, there's so much political debate about climate science in the United States and the fact that uh, U.S. citizens don't really pay attention to science. Uh, I was uh, very lucky uh, that prior to that meeting, uh, I had the good fortune uh, to meet um, Scott Jenkins. Uh, Scott Jenkins uh, was the um, venue operator, the vice president for ballpark operations at a U.S. football club called the Philadelphia Eagles. And Scott had just finished uh, overseeing the construction of that stadium. Uh, and together, Scott Jenkins and I uh, started to develop uh, a, a, 
a coalition of organizations, sports organizations in the United States uh, to advance uh, environmental messaging, to use sports as a platform to communicate uh, the environmental message uh, with sport leagues, with venues, and with teams. And Scott Jenkins is now uh, the chairman of the board uh, of the Green Sports Alliance. Um, let me go back. Um, the mission of the Green Sports Alliance, as I said, is really to uh, leverage the cultural and market influence of sports uh, to promote healthy and sustainable communities. And we do that by um, promoting recycling, promoting energy efficiency, promoting renewable energy, promoting the use of less toxic chemicals, uh, promoting the use of uh, environmentally preferable paper products, uh, and also uh, educating fans through public service announcements, through um, uh, uh, online uh, messaging from the leagues uh, through eco tips uh, we've uh, reached over a hundred million people uh, in North America alone with environmental uh, information uh, through uh, our collaborations with leagues and teams um, we started the Green Sports Alliance um, not even five years ago uh, with uh, six teams from six leagues uh, in the Pacific Northwest and over that time, uh, we now have over 320 teams and venues from 20 leagues in 14 countries. And as many of you in the room know, uh, we are uh, working on the development of the Green Sports Alliance Europe. We've already actually established a board of directors for the Green Sports Alliance Europe. And we have an affiliate, uh, the Sport Environment Alliance in Australia. Uh, and we have been asked to uh, work in Brazil and uh, in Japan. So there really is a a global sports greening coalition that's uh, taking place. And when you see some of the slides about the effects of this, I think you could see that this becomes a very, very powerful movement, a very, very powerful messenger for responsible environmental stewardship. Um, all uh, professional leagues are members of the Green Sports Alliance in North America. We actually helped create the sports greening programs. Omar Mitchell, you'll be hearing from him late, uh, later, uh, the Director of Sustainability for the National Hockey League, owes his job to the fact that we uh, created uh, the National Hockey League greening program. Uh, we did that with the National Basketball Association, with Major League Baseball, with Major League Soccer. Um, we helped create the Green Committee at the National Football League. Um, we work with, uh, with NASCAR. Uh, actually, one of uh, the most exciting uh, partnerships that uh, we recently announced, actually just last week in London, is with Formula E. Uh, the Electric Grand Prix Racing Organization. Formula E is the only sport ever invented specifically to advance an environmental mission, to figure out how to get gasoline out of auto racing. And uh, if somebody were going to say, oh, I'm going to create a new Grand Prix Racing League, people say, well, you can't do that. That already exists. But because they were able to do it through the environmental angle that it's going to be a, a new Grand Prix pre-racing league with no gasoline, they were able to create the, the Formula E, and it's a very exciting league, and they've had races uh, in North America, in Europe, and in Asia. Um, so these are, needless to say, pretty influential organizations, and all of these, this is North American events, every one of these events has environment, because of the work that we're doing with our partners, every one of these events has environmental messaging attached to it. Messaging to the supply chain, messaging to the fans. Um, the World Series, the US Open, the All-Star Game, the Stanley Cup. If you think about the combined cultural and market influence uh, of these events, uh, if you and of course, you know the French Open and the Australian Open and Wimbledon, if you think about these jewel events, and then overlay the potential for these events to be messengers for environmental stewardship, you recognize that there really is no better platform to reach as many people. The question is, how do you change people's minds? How do you instigate a cultural shift? What type of sectors are there that can allow us to get the attention of so many people in a non-political way? Government can't do it. Government is obviously divided and politically contentious. Religion, God bless the Pope, he put out a good 
God has already blessed the Pope, but um, uh, the, his, his, his encyclical, Laudato Si, a great document, but of course there is division within religious communities, so it may not be the right platform to pull everybody together. Similarly, um, science, folks don't pay attention to science. Film, well, not everybody likes US films or European films. Sports offers a, a harmonizing, a unifying platform to get people's attention in a non-political way that really no other sector that I know of does. For me, this work is 100% strategic. It's strategic as an advocate. And um, just to give you, uh, this is one season's worth of visibility in North America. Uh, you're talking about events that get literally six over six billion views. Now, obviously, that's not six billion individual individuals, uh, but it's, you know, repeat watches as well. But it does inform you of the kind of visibility that sports offers. Sports shows on TV are consistently the most widely watched shows. So um, sports gives us great uh, visibility, and it allows us to attack uh, all the issues that are, we, we, we really have to deal with, whether it's uh, reducing waste or energy efficiency, water conservation, um, uh, smart food, uh, energy, air, dealing with the oceans. In fact, let's go to this slide. This slide is, is very, uh, I think, informative. All industries meet at a professional sporting event. All industries are either suppliers or sponsors to professional sports. The chemical industry, the food industry, the energy industry, the plastics industry, the transportation industry, the energy industry, the textile industry, all of these industries are suppliers to sports. So, for example, when the National Hockey League last year issued its sustainability report, which is the first sustainability report done by a professional sports league, it was noticed by the supply chain worldwide. It has huge impact. And when the supply chain, when Dow and others in the supply chain hear about the need for uh, carbon sensitive products or ecologically intelligent products and they hear it from a sports league, it's different than hearing about it from Greenpeace. And it is a huge market, a $1.3 trillion global market. And this is how we do our work. See how much time I have left? Okay, I'm over my time. I'll be, I'm gonna wrap up in just two minutes. Um, we work on the ground to green operations. Uh, we work to educate the supply chain about environmentally preferable products that would help sports. Uh, we have a friend here from NatureWorks, for example. NatureWorks provides compostable food packaging. Uh, because of work that they've done in BASF and other companies, the Yankees, as an example, which was recycling only 40% of its waste, went to 90% waste diversion because they were able to actually start using compostable packaging with their food and divert food from landfill where it would otherwise cause major methane emissions. And of course, we look to engage fans. And um, these are the programs of the Green Sports Alliance. Our number one program, of course, focuses on climate and clean energy, renewable energy. Uh, we're also working on a project to uh, protect species next year. We will be issuing this report called Mascots at Risk. Three-fifths of all the animals used as mascots by professional sports uh, in the United States are uh, in danger of going extinct in the wild. 97% um, uh, of all the tigers are gone. Over 11,000 sharks are killed every hour hour for shark fin soup. Uh, we have agreement of uh, Major League Baseball, the NBA, the National Hockey League, Major League Soccer, the, the NFL to come together next spring to launch an initiative called Mascots Forever, which will raise money through sports to help uh, allocate to organizations working around the world to protect these species. It's a very exciting initiative. Obviously, we also work on healthy food, on water security, uh, on waste, smarter travel, and safer products. And we also, uh, one of the drivers of what we're doing is to help teams save money. Um, we, by, by doing energy efficiency uh, audits, by doing water conservation audits, by doing waste reduction audits, uh, we help teams save money. And obviously, this is about efficiency. And attached to these are literally hundreds of millions of pounds of climate, global warming pollution has been re reduced as a result of this work. This, this is the economics of it, but needless to say, when you reduce your energy use by 25% or 66%, um, 
or you reduce your waste generation, you're also generating uh, climate benefits. One of my favorite is the uh, Miami Heat. Miami Heat is on the board of directors of the Green Sports Alliance for a $73,000 investment that we actually help them uh, work with. When Actually, when I was at NRDC, uh, they were able to realize a $1.6 million savings in their energy cost. Uh, so that really shows you the potential uh, for this to be not only ecologically intelligent, but also uh, economically uh, valuable. Okay, so uh, that's it. I apologize for going on so long, um, but um, we really you know, need to, to build this uh, global sports movement glo uh, around the world, uh, use the platform of sports. Um, Mail has been uh, doing that uh, with the Ministry of Sport. Uh, our friends at Dow, which have done some of the, uh, the best carbon profiling, certainly uh, the Sochi Olympics, uh, it was the most comprehensive carbon profile done of any uh, complex sporting event ever. Um, obviously, you know, not that we don't all agree on everything all the time, but coming together to reduce carbon emissions uh, is something that we all have to put other things aside for and get together on. So with that, uh, I'm going to ask Mail uh, to uh, make his presentation, and then Dr. Nicoletta, and then we're going to have a, a little give and take, and we'll take some questions from the audience. Thank you very much. Bonjour à tous, je vais m'exprimer en français. Euh, alors, moi, je travaille au ministère des Sports sur la mission Sport et Développement Durable. Euh, C'est une mission qui, est, qui a pour mission d'accompagner l'ensemble des acteurs du sport à intégrer une démarche Développement Durable dans le, dans le sport. Et on, on, on a défini finalement quatre raisons pour lesquelles il, fallait, il était important de... Oui, vous avez des casques, si vous voulez, pour la traduction nous avons défini quatre raisons pour lesquelles il était important, selon nous, de, que les acteurs du sport intègrent une démarche développement durable. Premièrement, ben, tout simplement parce que le sport a une responsabilité. Comme n'importe quel acteur de notre société, on a un impact et il est important de, de, de réduire, euh, réduire cet impact. Deuxièmement, euh, parce que le sport a un rôle à jouer. Un rôle à jouer dans, en tant que valeur éducative, en tant qu'exemplarité. Il, il se doit de montrer l'exemple. Des évolutions à anticiper, euh, tout simplement, il y a des évolutions euh, qui sont liées au, à l'évolution de nos sociétés. Le, le prix du carburant est un, est un exemple. Est-ce qu est que nous aurons autant de participants qui viendront d'aussi loin et aussi longtemps aussi, et aussi souvent à toutes les rencontres sportives que, que nous organisons Il y a des anticipations aussi, euh, des évolutions à anticiper en termes de, de prise de conscience et attente des participants. En France, on a 71% des, des, des Français qui estiment que le sport, les acteurs du sport doivent intégrer, euh, se préoccuper de, de, de l'environnement. Des évolutions réglementaires également. Et puis, c'est une tendance de fond. Euh, au même titre pour nous, au même titre que finalement l'hyperconnectivité les, les, euh, sur les smartphones, sur les, sur les, les téléphones. La, la prise en compte de l'environnement est une tendance de fond. Et puis, c'est aussi des opportunités à saisir en termes d'innovation, en termes de développement, en termes de, de, de compétitivité, d'attractivité. C'est aussi des, une opportunité euh, à saisir. Alors, si vous voulez bien mettre euh, la, la diapositive, présenter quelques, quelques actions euh, qu'on a pu mettre en place en France. Alors ça a commencé euh, dès 2003 par le, le Comité national olympique sportif français qui, euh, qui a rédigé euh, l'agenda 21 du sport français. Puis dès 2008, on a développé euh, le bilan carbone. C'est un outil français pour euh, la mesure des émissions de gaz à effet de serre. Euh, spécifiquement au sport, on a développé un outil spécifiquement au sport pour mesurer ces, ces émissions et puis les, les, les réduire. En 2010, on a créé nos premières stratégies nationales, développement durable du sport. On en est à notre deuxième maintenant. Euh, on a intégré l'éducation à l'environnement dans les diplômes sportifs. On a développé des centres de ressources et d'expertise sur, sur le sujet pour qu'ils rassemblent toutes les informations, toutes les documentations sur, sur le sujet. Euh, 
On a organisé aussi des séminaires d'experts européens où on, on, on essaye de mutualiser, de, de, de partager toutes les connaissances et les expertises que, que nous pouvons avoir euh, au, niveau, euh, au niveau européen. On a monté euh, des, des opérations de sensibilisation comme une exposition sur les secondes vies du matériel sportif, toutes les secondes vies possibles, imaginables, avec le matériel sportif qu'on a, qu a exposé euh, euh, à Roland-Garros. Et puis, et puis des, euh, des, des partages avec le, des partages, euh, des travaux avec le, le, des ONG comme le WWF. Euh, on a également, euh, également euh, finalisé un cahier de préconisation environnementale pour les, euh, les grands organisateurs d'événements sportifs. Euh, le but, c'est euh, de définir euh, les, finalement les priorités les priorités du, de la France en matière environnementale pour les grands événements sportifs. Nous avons un, finalement un paquet qui arrive jusqu'en jusqu 2024, j'espère. Euh, voilà, c'est une série d'actions, de publications, de partages et, euh, et de partages également à l'international. La COP21 a été euh, est aussi un moment pour, euh, pour cela. Et... Quand on parle de finalement de euh, sur les enjeux climatiques, on, on parle souvent qu'il qu faut réduire et euh, ça euh, très bien dit. Le, le, le sport a son rôle à, à jouer. Il doit réduire, il doit inciter à, 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 à réduire ses prestataires, ses passions publiques, tout ça. Puis il y a aussi besoin de s'adapter, s'adapter au dérèglement euh, climatique, qu'on le veuille ou non. Euh, nous y sommes confrontés. Euh, il peut y avoir des, des pics de pollution dans des, pendant des événements sportifs en ville. Il y a toute une série d'événements qui, qui font que nous sommes obligés de nous adapter également. Mais finalement, réduire et la réduction et l'adaptation, on est toujours en réaction par rapport aux, aux événements. Et euh, on, on pense que le sport peut aller plus loin et peut être contributeur. Il peut être contributeur... En, en, en innovant, en, en, en apportant euh, finalement une plus-value environnemental au, euh, à la société. On l'imagine assez bien sur les impacts économiques, on les imagine assez bien sur les impacts euh, sociaux, mais environnemental, euh, c'est également le cas. L'exemple de notre euh, golfe national de Saint-Quentin-en-Yvelines est un exemple de puits de biodiversité. Et il apporte, il contribue à développer, à favoriser la biodiversité sur un territoire qui est agricole et qui peut être pauvre en, 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 en biodiversité. À notre, sens, à notre sens, maintenant, il faut qu'on arrive à aller un plus loin. C'est vrai que la, la, la prise de conscience et le sport est un outil formidable, mais je, je crois que si, si, si vous êtes là et si la COP, de, la COP 21 en France est, est aussi importante cette année, c'est que la prise de conscience avance. Et effectivement, on a avancé et, et plus, plus beaucoup de personnes remettent en question le, le, ces, ces, ces enjeux-là. Maintenant, c'est comment on contribue Comment on contribue juste, pas simplement en réduisant, pas comment on est co-responsable juste en n'impactant pas de manière négative le, la dimension environnementale, mais comment on contribue au bien-être, à, à des problématiques de comment on fait respirer une ville, comment on rafraîchit une ville avec des puits de biodiversité. Et le sport, par ses infrastructures, par ses grands événements sportifs, à notre sens, peut jouer un, un, un rôle sur ces, euh, ces questions-là. Je vais pas être euh, aussi long que, que, que notre ami euh, Alain, euh, mais je vais quand même clôturer par, par une innovation que, que porte la Fédération française de basketball, et, euh, et je leur en remercie encore une fois, qui le porte pour l'ensemble des activités sportives et qui est sur l'innovation, mais l'innovation pas pour réduire notre activité, pas pour... pour remplacer nos modes de consommation ou nos modes de déplacement par, par d'autres modes de, de déplacement, mais comment on innove pour optimiser Parce que c'est bien là, finalement, le, le point clé où on peut aller beaucoup plus loin, c'est comment on optimise. Comment on optimise sans réduire, finalement, notre activité, notre qu'on optimise ben, la consommation d'énergie, de restauration, de toutes ces, toutes ces consommations qu'on peut, qu peut avoir. 
Donc je vous propose de, de, de finir par un petit euh, clip qui, propose, qui présente une, une innovation, un outil qui permet euh, d'optimiser les déplacements dans les rencontres sportives. En France, on a 2,5 millions de rencontres sportives par an, ça fait 50 000 par semaine, où euh, chaque week-end, chaque semaine, des, 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 euh, des participants vont participer à des, des rencontres sportives. Et on s'est posé la question, en 2008 déjà, on s'est posé la question, est-ce que si on redécoupe au niveau territorial ces, 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 ces poules ou ces organisations, est-ce qu'on peut optimiser les déplacements Eh bien oui, à quasiment 15%. 15% des déplacements de 2,5 millions de rencontres sportives, c'est absolument... c'est très important. Alors... Ça ne, concerne, ça ne concerne pas finalement les, 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 les rencontres sportives où il y a de l'enjeu sportif important. On est sur des, euh, sur, euh, des manifestations où des enjeux sportifs sont, sont, sont moins importants, mais c'est le vivier le plus important de, de, de rencontres sportives. Est-ce qu'on peut lancer la, la petite euh, vidéo de présentation Voilà, c'est un exemple d'outil d'innovation qui, qui, que nous avons développé. Euh, je finirai juste par, par cette phrase, cette phrase qui, qui dit que le, finalement le, le, le changement dépend de notre capacité à remettre en question nos, nos systèmes, nos modèles et nos habitudes. Et euh, cette, ce, ce logiciel est, est un outil pour nous aider à, à modifier ces habitudes et ces systèmes. Merci. Okay, um, as you know, we started our panel late, so we're gonna use all our time. Uh, Dr. Nicoletta, who is the uh, Technical and Sustainability Director for Dow Olympics and Stadiums. Thank you, Alan. Bon après-midi, mesdames, messieurs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really happy to be here today. Uh, to be here today, to connect sport and sustainability and climate change. As we have already heard by many of the other speakers, sports has their unique, speaks a, a unique universal language. It has the ability to create excitement and engagement in a way that is really unique. And we at Dow believe that our science and technology solutions have a role to play in this too. We became the official partner, official chemistry company of the Olympics in 2010. But our involvement with sport goes back to much earlier than that. 
we got involved with the Olympic Games in the 1980s, starting to provide technology and chemistry solutions for infrastructures and venues. For instance, providing insulation materials to enhance energy efficiency of Olympic venues or heat transfer fluids to provide perfect conditions for the ice of the playing field. Many of our technologies and solutions go into the making the games higher performing and more sustainable. We provide, as Neil already mentioned, since 18, 118 years, we provide chemistry solutions to many different markets. But why is this relevant for a sports event and an event organizer? It is relevant because we are a global company and hence have a global presence and are there many times much before an event organizer or a city decides to host an event. So we are there in the preparation, but we are there also for the legacy, for after the event has already moved on. When we look at the, when we became engaged in the Olympic movement and became a partner of the IOC of the Olympic Games, we realized that we could broaden our participation and our reach significantly. We realized that event organizers and uh, host cities really need to take many components into consideration when hosting an event. A mega sports event needs to be a stepping stone in the long term development of a sustainable city. And hence, they are looking at issues like integrating existing venues with new venues. Um, they are looking at how to uh, create the utilities and the transport infrastructure for an effective event. And they are looking at how to advance the level of the and the performance of the sport. And DAO technologies can support all of these things. Uh, we provide things, as I already said, as insul like insulation solutions, but also wiring cable solutions, pipe solutions, coatings, and uh, technologies that go into things like the hockey pitches. We provide though also something in addition, and these are really the two pillars that you see at the side of this slide. We provide a focus on innovation and on sustainability. And we realized that through this focus on innovation and sustainability, we could go beyond providing technologies and uh, to support the event organizers. We could create platforms, for instance, the platform that we are currently working on with Rio to mitigate the carbon footprint of a uh, an important sports event. Now, when we talk about sustainability programs, we really need to keep the long term in mind and we need to understand how we can combine creating economic prosperity, value for society, and also respecting the planet. We need to keep the triple bottom line in mind. And so this is what we did in the carbon partnership approach that we have created specifically for the Olympic Games. It was created for the first time with the Sochi Olympic Games. We had to create a program framework and we used subject matter experts uh, from different organizations to help us create this carbon framework. And this framework allows us to implement low carbon and energy efficient technologies in host geographies to deliver greenhouse gas reductions. And these greenhouse gas reductions are a legacy of our engagement with the games and help to reduce and offset or, or mitigate the footprint of the games. So we can truly be a, a change agent if we want. We can show that it is possible to create lower carbon emissions through application of uh, uh, latest generation technologies. But the key thing in this program is really that we use the Olympic brand to create engagement and create change. Now here you see a few of the results delivered by these programs that Dow has initiated for the Olympic Games. 
The uh, first program, as I said, was with the Sochi Olympic Games, and we deliver. We were committed to deliver 360,000 tons of CO2 equivalent reductions uh, for the Sochi Olympic Games for the mitigation of some direct emissions of the event organizers. And before the games actually started, we were already able to demonstrate 520,000 tons delivered for the Sochi Games from projects that had been implemented not in the Olympic venues but throughout Russia. So we had initiated many projects throughout Russia that delivered CO2 reductions. Uh, but then with Rio, we started earlier and we wanted to create a much broader approach. And today we are in the process of implementing and initiating several projects throughout Brazil, but also throughout Latin America. And these projects will lead to CO2 reductions for the Olympic Games in Rio. Not only do we want to create CO2 reductions, but we also want to engage people. We want to engage up to half a million people to talk to them about climate change and sustainability. So again, a sports event was able to create uh, collaborations and uh, really to trigger uh, uh, working together in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by using the Olympic brand. So overall, we of course realize that much more needs to happen. And uh, this program has really demonstrated that it is possible to use the, the brand of a sporting event to create CO2 reductions uh, that are a legacy of the engagement of a partner with the Olympic Games. And it shows that this uh, reduction can lead really to structural changes in the infrastructure of that country. Of course, much more needs to happen, but it's, uh, uh, we are proud to be here to actually show that tangible results have already been delivered because it will require a collaborative effort to uh, uh, meet the uh, commitments that are being made in these weeks here in Paris. Thank you. Do a couple of questions. Um, I know we're running short on time. Yeah, we got to take about five or seven minutes. I um, would like to start out and um, ask Mel and Dr. Nicoletta what you've described some good positive work. Tell us about the challenges that you have had to overcome and that you continue to have to overcome to advance your work? And maybe we could start with you, Dr. Nicoletta. Yeah, I think, can you hear me? Yeah, I think the main challenge is to get involved very early on. Um, the power of the brand, the Olympic brand or any other brand is there prior to the event. You know, to, to really create engagement. And so in, it's very important that any of these programs start early on so that we can uh, use the momentum that that event actually creates to drive them forward and to advance also the results. So I think the, the time frame is one of the key challenges. And I think the, the second one is that we want to change a hot topic to something that is really positive and engaging. Something that sport really teaches us how to do. Sport teaches us how to set a very ambitious goal and to, how to reach it. And we want to do the same thing with this type of program. So how can we change it to something positive that engages people? And for, for us, the, the key recipe there was to use the, the brand. Mail, what, are, what challenges are you facing in advancing your work? What are the big obstacles that you confront that you have to navigate around? Il y en a plusieurs. Il y en a plusieurs, mais celui que j'aurais envie de, de mettre en avant, c'est finalement le changement de comportement. C'est comment on, on transforme cette prise de conscience en changement, en changement de comportement, d'actes, euh, de décision. Et euh, le, le, le sport a un, un rôle à jouer euh, très fort en termes d'éducation, de sensibilisation, de prise de conscience. Et, euh, et maintenant, on doit changer les, 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 les comportements et innover, parce que finalement, les solutions, elles n'existent pas forcément. 
C'est bien le, la problématique le, sur le sport, l'aspect social, l'aspect économique, ça fait. C'est quelque chose qui, même s'il y a beaucoup de progrès encore à faire, c'est quelque chose qui, qui fait partie des gènes, l'aspect social dans le, dans le sport. Euh, l'aspect environnemental, on a besoin d'inventer. Et, et le sport et les grands événements sportifs a cette force de pouvoir catalyser des dynamiques, des énergies, des moyens pour innover, pour. Euh, on, on, on parlait, je le disais tout à l'heure, comment on fait respirer une ville, comment on, on, comment on va la nourrir, comment on, on, on va se, se confronter en France à ces problèmes d'espace, de, 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 parce qu'on est de plus en plus nombreux dans un espace qui est toujours aussi fini. Ben, comment on superpose les usages des infrastructures, comment on, 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 on apporte des, 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 des puits de fraîcheur, de la végétalisation sur les bâtiments. Et, et c'est finalement toutes ces, ces innovations et ces... Et ce changement de comportement qui est, à mon sens, le prochain défi euh, auquel on va avoir à se, se confronter euh, dans le sport. Great. Oh, we could, we could, we, our, our time is short, but we could take maybe one or two questions um, if from the audience. Otherwise, I have another question. Hi there, Pierluigi Zaccheo from My Stadium Limited. I've got a question for Mal. You showed us what you've been doing so far. Now, my question for you is, how do you see France? What will be the role of France in the years to come to promote sustainability initiatives at the European level and at an international level? Do you reckon that France can lead this movement in changing people's culture with regard to sustainability? Ben, on on, on l'espère, on, on l'espère l'être. Euh, C'est une question où certainement euh, notre, euh, notre secrétaire d'État au sport euh, qui, euh, qui va venir euh, faire une intervention après euh, on pourra apporter des éléments et je ne vais pas répondre à, à, à sa place. Mais il euh, y, y a la scène diplomatique et euh, effectivement comment, comment la France peut être moteur sur, sur ces enjeux-là. Euh, après, il y a tout simplement euh, la question de encore une fois, de, de, de l'innovation et de comment on partage au sein de, au niveau mondial, au niveau international, euh, les innovations. On, je parlais de changement de, de, changement de comportement. Euh, les changements de comportement, finalement, on, on sait, on ne prend pas nos décisions de manière rationnelle. Euh, le, le public, les consommateurs, on ne prend pas nos, nos décisions de manière rationnelle. Sinon, pourquoi on trierait chez nous Et finalement, quand on est dans, sur un événement sportif, on ne trie pas. Il y, a, il y a des comportements, qui, il y a des choses plus subtiles à, à, à comprendre, comme, comme voilà, des responsabilisations sur un organisateur et tout ça. C'est tous des sujets où, à mon avis, en partageant et en innovant, et en, plus on partage, plus on, ça pousse à innover entre pays euh, sur ces questions-là. Et à mon avis, ça peut être ce point-là qui peut, qui peut faire de la, enfin de la France et puis des, des autres pays européens des, des acteurs un peu... Euh, à la pointe, entre guillemets, euh, sur, sur le sujet. OK, so, um, all right, one last question, because uh, I'd like to take it, turn it over to the Minister for Sport. My, my name is Thomas. I'm a journalist for a media named uh, New Stank Football. I have a question for you, Alan. Uh, you announced the, the launch of uh, the Green Sports Alliance in Europe. And uh, what will be the challenges for you uh, to adapt your model from the American uh, sports um, industry, which is quite different from the European sports industry? Uh, for instance, the venues are more here uh, publicly owned than privately owned. What challenges do you do you uh, picture or that you will face here in Europe? Yeah, just for clarity, I announced the efforts to develop the uh, Green Sports Alliance in Europe and we are developing it and, and working it forward. But needless to say, there are very different, um, and that's why in Europe, uh, it has to be much more of a federation. In, in North America, we actually have a, a continental-wide, a North American-wide organization. Everybody speaks the same language. Uh, we have you know similar laws at the national level or the absence of important laws at the national level. Uh, in Europe, uh, there's different laws. Um, uh, there's uh, obviously a lot of public ownership. Uh, there's language issues. Um, there's social issues that are incorporated into uh, advancing sustainability in a way that we don't necessarily do in, 
in North America. So um, actually, that's what uh, you know why we're pulling people together from Switzerland, from Austria, you know, from Spain, from France, from Germany, uh, even from the UK uh, to have a conversation about you know how the Green Sports Alliance effort coalition could uh, proceed in Europe in a in a collegial collaborative way. But you're absolutely right; there are challenges uh, in doing it Europe in Europe uh, that we didn't uh, you know uh, encounter in North America, and that's I think one of the reasons we were able to grow so quickly. But I do want to say that I think the potential with the Green Sports Alliance in Europe uh, is equal to what we've done in North America, if not if not even greater. Uh, with that, um, I just want to point out that we've got the private sector, we've got government, we've got the NGO community, and that's uh, an indication of how we all need to collaborate, we all need to come together to deal with these urgent issues. No one has a monopoly on virtue on this issue. Uh, we all really have to pull together and add our unique voices and our unique a a assets uh, to, to taking this on. And I want to thank Dr. Nicoletta, and I want to thank Mail, and I especially want to thank our friends at, uh, at at Climate Action and uh, Nick Henry and Claire Poole for, for pulling this together for us. And um, I look forward to sharing the rest of the day with all of you. Thank you very much.